Uh, Jeremy, for those that don't know your story, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of set you up a little bit too. Um, okay. I first met Jeremy again, February of 2014, and I went to this office in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And they said, man, there's this, there's this Jeremy guy you got to meet. He's wrote like the most insurance of anybody in the office. And he was making, he was writing like 400 thousand dollars a year and i'm just like dude in the world is this guy man like i and i was i was i was i was on the captive side of the business yeah i didn't understand i didn't understand the independent side at all there was like four thousand carrier options and i'm like i don't know where i'm going or what i'm gonna do i just know that i'm gonna work hard and try to live up to jeremy pilomer you know and i remember thinking you know what that's that's somebody i need to learn from and i think that's powerful because there's so many people in life that like and i hope you guys are way, which I think you are because you're on tonight, is you find people in life who you believe are ahead of you and you you latch on, you learn from them, you know, you, you're coachable. Um, I tell our sales guys in our office all the time, like, like be coachable, want to learn, listen. And when, when I give you a nugget, like actually use it, right? So tonight when Jeremy gives you some nuggets, make sure that you use them, you know? So I love it. Jeremy, for those who don't know you, man, I'd love for you to share your story and then we can jump into some content. Yeah, so uh, you just want me to go back to kind of day one, just That's just kind one. of my thing. 19, um, 19 uh, you said, what, what year were you born? I was born in 79. Okay, so um, are we starting there or where are we? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So, um, so yeah, listen, it, uh, anyone that's on this, Cody, that has heard me uh, on any of your your podcasts or your web webinars, um, I've shared a little bit of this. But um, so if you kind of were to go back, um, all I've ever done is sell. You, you know that. Um, yeah. And I, I worked at a company, um, prior to, to elder care where, um, I worked in a referral department. Uh, and basically Mm -hmm. what it was, it was a window business. It was an amazing business. I learned so much there. Uh, I was kind of my college because I didn't go to school, didn't go to college. Um, and, one of the things, or I, I learned a couple of things, but a couple of the most valuable things I learned was was how to work hard, uh, and I I did learn like I'm I'm not just making this up for for your show, but the power of referrals, right? So the way the system was set up was back in the day you could make outbound calls and you could do what we call GT, which is general telemarketing. So you make a call, it's just random people that didn't express any interest. Uh, and you would set an appointment. So you would set one of the salesmen like five appointments a day, 9, 11, 1, 3, 5. Mm. And um, on a general telemarketing lead, they had a, a, a smaller closing percentage. So if they had 25 leads a week, they might sell three to five deals, right? Three, four, something like that. Then the next step up on a lead was what we called an early bird. It's like the movies that you watch uh, on Saturday where uh, they say they cut to commercials and then they do the infomercial on the windows and they say, call us, we'll give you a Walmart gift card, right? Those sold at, at an even better clip, right? Um, and then mm. you had the referral leads. The referral leads were all people that had windows installed. And then they would refer Cody, like I had windows, I refer Cody. And then uh, those closed at like 80%, right? So if you had three leads, um, you might drive a pretty good distance, but you sold almost everyone you talked to. And so as I left um, that business, um, I came into the insurance business and I had a couple of things going for me. One was that I was working 60 hours a week. So the short shift for us at my prior job was eight in the morning to eight at night. You got that shift every six weeks. Everything else was 14 to 16 hours every single day, um, unless you could get the 12 hour shift, which was amazing uh, to get off at eight o'clock. So when I transitioned from that that business to the insurance business, and I think I said this um, on a previous call, is like, look, I love insurance agents. I'm an insurance agent. Like that's that's who I am. I love what I do. I love making a difference. Um, but we're not working 60 hours a week most of the time. Um, now we say that we are. Um, but what happened is I came from an organization where I could work 60 hours a week, where I was working 60 hours. I committed to 40, which is still a lot more than most of my peers were working. Um, and it was part time for me. And so what happened, um, and I I somewhat hate to share this story because. I don't want to make it about me. I had a great system with great mentors and great leaders. Um, but as I came into the industry uh, at elder care specifically, I caught a lot of flack from people because I um, 
was, was told that I was getting all the good leads, right? And we all hear that. Like if I had Cody's leads, I'd be just as good as Cody. Well, like Cody's really good. So probably, um, no, I wouldn't be. Um, but that was the mindset around the office was that if, if I was getting the leads Jeremy was getting, then I would sell just as much as him. And no joke, Tony Bettis, who is our founder and CEO, um, every Monday when every other agent was getting leads from, from their managers in our office, I had to go to Tony's office and he had to, he had to get like handpick the leads to show everyone else that I wasn't getting these special, you know, cherry picked leads. Um, and, and I think the difference for me was that I was, was, and I'll, I'll get to this, was trying to create, uh, an environment for me that replicated, um, my referral, um, sort of expertise or referral program that I worked in before. And I worked hard because I think that the problem that we run into nowadays is that people think like referrals are to me, the very best lead. There's not a better lead. It takes cultivating to create referrals, but I think people get on and think like, well, if I can just figure out referrals, then I can work less because like more will come. The, the problem is successful people don't work less. Like Cody Askins, you know, Brian Askins, Brian Adams, all the people that we look up to, like they're, they're not people um, that are like sitting around figuring out what next lead source can help them to work less, right? So they're, they're, as they're learning systems that make them better, they're working even harder to capitalize on that. True. And something happened to me really early on in my career at elder care. Uh, and I wrote down this, this nugget that you just shared, which is gravitating towards someone and actually listening to what they say. So I went into to this agent's office is Kenny Bettis is Tony's brother. He was an agent. He was like the OG, you know, he had the Rolex, the nice car. And as the young agent, I was like, wanted to be just like Kenny. And one of the things that's a life rule for me is I don't care anything about what the guy at the middle of the road says. Like, you're mm. never going to catch me at the table gossiping with a guy that's like a middle of the road producer, because all he's going to do is bring me down. Right. right. Um, so I went to Kenny and, and what was most impressive to me was in Kenny's office. I don't remember. This would have been probably 2001. Um, he had a check that was like uh, laminated over a piece of wood. It looked fancier than I just described it, but it was for just over $10,000. And I asked Kenny, like, what, what is the significance of this check? And he said, it was the first time I ever made $10,000 a month on a renewal. And it was super impactful for me because I operate off this mindset that if, if, if he can do it, I can do it, Right. And even if I fall short and end up at 9,000 a month on a renewal, then it's still, I'm doing pretty good. So from then on, all I wanted to do was mirror what Kenny did. So Kenny, when I wanted to know something, I went to Kenny. If, if somebody else told me something, I wasn't listening. Like, what did Kenny do? Because you don't have a $10,000 check laminated on your wall. Um, and one of the things that Kenny taught me was that there's two types of agents that exist. One of them is, and we all know these agents because we've all talked to their customers. One of them is when you ask them who sold you the policy, they say, I have no idea. Uh, haven't talked to them since they wrote me. And then the other person is you say, who wrote your policy? And you say, and they say, Cody Askins wrote me the policy. Every year he sends me a birthday card and a Christmas card. And so that was never more evident than early on. Um, I needed money. And I think you've heard this story. Um, single most impactful event for me at elder care. Uh, Kenny tells me that if I go out and this is, this is way before e apps and mailing, this is back when you had to do wet signatures. I had to walk, you know, uphill both ways in the snow to get to an appointment. Um, I went to one of Kenny's houses. He told me he would pay me to, uh, go out and rewrite them. And, so I show up at this lady's house in rural Arkansas and door shut. Uh, I knock on it. She opens it. The door catches on one of those chains and she's super not polite. She's like, what do you want? Who are you? I said, I'm Jeremy Pelemeyer. Kenny Bettis told me to come see you. She said, where's Kenny? I said, he's not here. She said, I only talked to Kenny Bettis and she slams the door in my face. So I go back to a payphone. I call Kenny. I say, here's what just happened. He says, give me five minutes. Go back and talk to her. I'm like, you want me to go talk to this lady? She just yelled at me, slammed the door in my face. So I go back and when I show back up, um, the 
the storm doors open or closed, but the regular doors open before I can make it to the front porch. She meets me there and she says how sorry she is. Like, I'm so sorry. Mm. Kenny told me uh, who you are. I sit down to do a presentation and she says, no, I don't need to see whatever Kenny says I'll do. So that very moment was when I thought like, I either want to have this as my client or I don't. So what I did is I started cultivating relationships. And and again, I'm not trying to be down on, on mankind, but we live in a society where everything that we do, we want right now. Like nobody's interested in working for the next 10 years to buy the new truck, right? They want the new truck right now and they'll worry about paying for it over the next 10 years. Yeah. So the thing with referrals to me is like a garden, right? You go out and you do all this tilling and you've worked for a whole day, two days, three days, four days, it's hot. And you have absolutely nothing to show for it. There's no crops, there's nothing. Now you got to water every day. Not too much water, just enough, maybe talk to the plants, whatever does it for you. But then over time, you get a little bit more, starts to grow, right? And as it grows, you can't stop watering it. You can't stop taking care of it. You can't say, oh, it's growing, now it's fine, because then it'll die. And so the way that I grew my, my referral base is, I write an app, I send a thank you card, handwritten, personal. Mm. It's great to talk to you. Super excited that you had your birthday and really excited I could share it with you. A week later, I'm going to call you. I'm going to tell you that your policy is pending. When I get it, I'm going to get it to you. Then I call you back. I tell you, I just mailed it to you. I call you back in 30 days or on the effective date. And... um I make sure your old policy got canceled. Now, at that point, I called to do checkup calls every 60 to 90 days. Cody, how's it going? Just checking up on you. Want to make sure you're doing okay. Um, from there, I'm building a relationship because my, again, I'm sort of resharing things here is that we live in a society today where we thank people for doing their job. Like we just had a hailstorm here. And uh, everybody's roofs and gutters, garage doors, windows are all busted out. It's baseball size. It doesn't matter who you call. No one calls you back, right? They're all too busy. But when someone does call you back, the first thing you say is like, hey, thanks for calling me back. Like I'm now thanking people for calling me to help them make a living and support their family. It's crazy. <laughs> but but that's that's where we are right now, right? So like used to, you had to be exceptional to be viewed as exceptional. Well, now you don't. Like now you just got to call people back and just be polite. And people are like, oh, he's amazing. No, I'm not. I'm just average. But no one else is amazing. So it makes me look amazing. And so as we step out as agents and we start to do things to help people, right? It's this idea that if I put Cody first and I do an amazing job for Cody, Everything else works well for me. It's like the way that we should run our agency, our businesses is like, let's take care of the people and then everything else works out. And so the referrals for me are all about this idea that like, look, leads are important. Uh, everybody needs them. But but in my mind, they need them to get started. Like there's a lot of organizations, storefronts, all state, like these, these groups that and they're not running a thousand piece lead drops every Monday just to get people to see like people are calling them. It's AEP They're, you know, and so I think that as agents, we need to stop and think like if I haven't had someone call me and ask to buy insurance and I've got a couple hundred customers, because to me, that's the number, right? I can't expect to get referrals with six customers, but when I get maybe 150 to 250 people, then I should have I should have done such a great job for Cody that you want to tell everybody about me. Um, so so for me, it's really just this idea of of like trying to cultivate the relationship so that I've built such a relationship with Cody that when I do uh, need something, I can call and ask you for it. Absolutely, gosh, that's so good. And two, I, I don't know, I don't know if you guys. Hopefully, you guys are taking notes, man. But like, it's funny you say that handwritten thank you card most like we hear about it we start out doing it but we don't actually keep doing it you know right uh, and then the calls you know mailing policies calling them before uh, you know uh, before calling them after calling them on anniversary call them every 90 days like all those things it, it makes so much sense because they're going to absolutely know who their agent is you know, by asking about insurance they're going to think about you it's 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 small things that we 
undervalue and overlook and just don't make time for. Yeah, you know, and listen, I I love I love getting on like these deals with you because you always make me feel like I'm really good at what I do. So thanks for that. You are. But man, the the honest truth is is like we're in the Medicare space, man. Like if we're not, and I'm stealing Sean Mike's line here, but if we're not successful, it's just because we're not working hard. Like it's it's a it's an amazing business because we're you know if if most of us on this call are all independent, I would assume, and so we have this ability to uh, work for all these different carriers. So we have the most competitive products. It just comes down to getting in front of people, and they're going to buy from someone. And the only reason they don't buy from us, regard like we hear it all the time, like well, they want to talk to their wife or you know their kids handle their business or but those are just them telling you no. They just don't have the heart to say, Cody, I don't want to work with you, right? Um, and we hang on to that. But like we have a rule, uh, a few of us guys in the office when we were selling is like we don't ever call people back. Like if they don't, if they're not interested, then they can call us. Um, but I think that if if we just get out there and we we look at this um, from a perspective of if I just get in front of people and do right by them, I'll be successful. Then it just comes down to if you're not successful, then you're either not getting in front of people um, or when you are, you're not doing it the right way because you you can't get in front of a lot of people and not be successful if you're doing it right. But you also can't be successful if you're not getting in front of a lot of people. True. Yeah, that's a big thing that holds agents back. Um, Laura just said, are these tasked in CRM or calendar or manual when you're thinking through some of those tasks that you do? So I just had a system. It was thank you card. Uh, it was checkup call. And um, if if my wife were on the call, she would also tell you that um, part of what I tried to create within my my brand as an agent was I wanted people to identify with me as more than an insurance salesman. So what I would do is I would actually have my wife uh, call and do checkup calls for me. And it doesn't work for everybody because wives work and, and schedules don't allow that. But what happens is like, you know, we're selling an intangible item, like unlike a car or a vacuum, like when there's no tires, they can kick with insurance. When they finally need it, it's too late if it's not the right plan. So what they're buying, obviously, is us. I mean, you you know that. Uh, we are selling ourselves. Uh, and that is not more true with any other product than insurance. But part of who I am is like my family. And so my wife, who they hear about during my warm-up and my kids, I love to connect that when my wife calls and says, Hey, Jeremy's super busy. He's not able to reach out, but he wants me to call and check on you. And they're like, oh, I've heard all about you. And it just helps to build, um, you know, who I am. And that's someone that cares about these opportunities I have with consumers. Yes. Yes. I don't, I don't know if that answers the question as far as like, um, did I have them written down? I mean, no, I would be embarrassed to tell you that 20 years ago, I had a a yellow notepad that on the back uh, of the cardboard piece, you know, because you weren't going to rip that off. I wrote down who I needed to follow up with, and then I'd transfer that to the new uh, deal. I think the sophistication with things like Medicare Center and CRMs are are so much better today than they were before. But but listen, I'm I'm not an anti technology guy. I think technology is critical, but I think we do get a little bit caught up in this like, how can we make things easier? Uh, and then you you put it in the system and you forget about it, you know. So so I do think there's an element of simplicity with things that we can open up in our notebook and it's our to do list that's there for us. Hundred percent, yes, yes. And just just the act of like wanting to do something good for your clients, you know, and actually doing it, like it's strong, so strong. Yeah. What what else when it comes to the power of referrals? Should we? Um, share and teach on before we open it up for some Q&A a little bit? I think it, so referrals are working smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. That's the first piece for me is like, I would rather work two referrals than 10 lead cards. Um, mm. I, I think that the the referral only comes from from cultivating relationships. And so I think that it's it's this this multiple part piece 
uh, that you just have to work through. And so, again, from my perspective, referrals came when I worked a system, which is building a relationship. I don't think you can get referrals if you don't build relationships. And so uh, I, I think that that just goes to this constant contact. Um, and man, in a world where everybody texts and emails, like human interaction, I think is is missed uh, and valuable when you can take that time. Because really, Cody, when you're thinking about like reaching out to your clients. So um, I was in the field for just a couple of years, um, had hundreds and hundreds of customers. Um, and, and I could work those customers like on the phone on my way to appointments. So if my, my goal was to, to reach out to five people or eight people per day, then it would be a voicemail or a handwritten card that said, I missed you. So that's my system. Even today, like um, if you ever come to my office um, in between appointments, conference calls and all the things that I do, I still have clients that I maintain. So if wow. you come into my office at any given time, you will see thank you cards on my floor because that's my filing system. I write them at my desk and then I put them, I kind of throw them across my room so that they're sitting on my floor so I can pick them up. But that's what I do is I call you to check on you. And when you don't answer, I send you a handwritten note that says, hey, Cody, I reached out to you, couldn't get in touch with you, call my cell phone when you can. I put my business card in there uh, along with a handwritten on my cell phone. That way you'll call me back. Uh, and then we just have that conversation. And when you said you were, you were, you would, what were you, what, what, what ended up on your floor? So it's, it's my, it's the way that I do any and all letters I'm going to mail out. Mm. So, so basically I don't like clutter. And so instead of like doing five thank you cards and leaving them on my desk, I throw them to in front of my desk. Cause I can't see in front of my desk. It's my floor. It's just a weird deal I have. So I take it. I, I throw it over and then nine out of 10 times at some point in the day, someone from my office is probably going to come pick them up and put them in the mail for me. That's awesome. That's yeah. I'll send you a picture. I'll, I'll send you a picture next time. I need it. That's a system, right? Yeah. You, you know what's happening. Um, Joe says, do you believe in sending out a mailer to your current clients asking for referrals? And if so, do you have a sample letter you send? So I've never sent a letter out that asks for referrals. I think even in today's world of compliance, it's even trickier today than it was when I was in the field. But but uh, Joe, what I do is send out birthday cards, Christmas cards, uh, and um, like some preemptive AEP letters that talk about things like, hey, Cody, um, as AEP starts, you're going to get a lot of calls from agents wanting you to change this or ask you about this. If it's not from me, give me a call back. So I think that, again, the idea is less about asking for referrals and more about creating such good service that Cody wants to tell people about me. Yes. Yep. And, and, and would you say, so you, I mean, how many referrals do you think you got a year when you really started getting going? Um, I would probably say that I would write a couple hundred thousand in premium all off referrals. Wow. Just, just like, and keep in mind, my, I'm probably a little bit unique in that I had a, a, a couple of years from that I was hard in the field. And then I got out, I haven't been in the field, like face to face with a consumer since probably 2012. And even then it was, I would periodically go out with some agents that said the leads weren't any good or whatever. And I'd say, all right, well, let's go see. Um, still today, I probably write, I don't know, 60 to 70 policies per year that are referred to me. That's awesome. And and those, Cody, are like, if you call in, like last week, for example, I had a guy call in on Friday and he was turning 65. He was referred to me. And so my standard pitch is like, hey, if you need to see someone in person, let me refer you to someone that can come see you because I can't do that. I don't have time. I can talk you through everything. And he's like, no, I just want, you know, what the person you referred me has or that referred you to me. Um, and so we just did a med sup over the phone um, with uh, with Ace, actually. I'm not putting the plug in for them, but they have a, a great e app that we used. Um, Ace. Yep. Chubb. I've been out of uh, I've been out of the game for a minute. I don't even, I don't yeah. even 
So great little product, great system that you can do like a, just sends a link to their cell phone. They click it. That's um, awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Huh? Yeah. I remember uh, that was one of the things that was the biggest difference for me was moving into on the independent side was, yeah, I mean, having more technology and just having more available in 2014 compared to being on the career side for sure. It's crazy. That's good. I love that. Um, any other questions, guys, as we're hanging out, talking about referrals, following up with clients, throwing letters on the floor, all the above? Uh, we even have phones not connected to the walls now. That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. That's hilarious, actually. Um, do you have a script? You know, I don't, I could listen, if, if people needed one, I could put something together, but you've worked with me long enough to know I'm a, I'm, I'm a from the heart kind of guy. Um, I don't know that it always bodes well for me because, uh, sometimes it probably could come off as unpolished. Um, but I'm very much a, just let's have a conversation about things and see, um, you know, what, what direction we need to go. Um, what do you put? What is that? What do you put in the do you card? Thank you, probably. Maybe. So my my card is like depends on what it is. If I if I wrote you a policy or if I if I converted a policy. So the other thing I would say is I always call consumers prior to their anniversary date. I want them to hear about a rate increase before they get a letter in the mail. So I'm going to call you, Cody, and say, hey. Uh, you're going to get a rate increase with company A. It's going to go up $7. Um, I just want you to know. And then if if they ask me to shop around or have any suggestions, I can handle that. Um, the thank you cards, every single time I have a conversation with a consumer, I send out a card. So if someone calls in and says, hey, I lost my ID card. I need a new one. I'm going to send a card to them. Like, hey, Cody, thanks for calling. We've got your ID card ordered should have it in the next few days. If you don't get it in 10 days, give me a call back. Thanks so much for trusting me to handle your insurance. Um, so there might be somebody that gets five or six thank you cards a year from me, depending on how many times uh, we talk. Got it. That's awesome. How do you get referrals from past clients? You get referrals from old clients. Gosh, I, again, I sound like the, the school teacher that said I taught your parents, but I'm writing a lot of people that I do their mom and dad's insurance. So like now uh, kids are, are old enough and turning 65 that I I'm now writing them. So those are great sales because they're just calling and saying, Hey, you did my mom's insurance. And the only really pitch I've got to give is we can't do a plan F anymore. Cause you've aged in after a certain date. So now we've got this plan and, you know, typically people um, just, just say, Hey, let's do it. I believe it. Uh, that was Ray. Brett says you make a phone call, leave a voicemail, then you send them a card. What's the message that you put in the card for that missed call to them? Maybe yeah. That's so, it. yep. So it'd be like, "Hey, Cody, reached out today to talk with you about your insurance. Sorry, I wasn't able to catch you. Could you give me a call on my cell? First chance you get, and I put my cell number down." Laura said, they close a business, do you ask for referrals or from people who do not, do not when you close business or people who do not want to purchase from you? If you close a business, do you ask for referrals? Like if you close, if you close an app or if you don't close an app or both, both. You know, typically what I would say is. Uh, do you ask in an appointment? What's that? Do you ask it like in an appointment? No, not really. What what I would typically say is um, I would say something like, hey, Cody, listen, thanks for letting me handle your insurance for you. I really appreciate it. I know you could choose anybody. Um, one thing in my business that's probably the most important thing is, is my name getting out there and people passing me around. The vast majority of my business now comes from word of mouth. So if you come across anybody uh, that you know could use some help with insurance, has questions about insurance, Will you please give them my cell phone number? Let them know they can call or text me anytime. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good. Yep. Did you develop any referral partners outside of clients referring you to others? No, I didn't. But I, I think 
so obviously, okay, so so the, the short answer is no. The longer answer is kind of. Um, you, you have to sort of remember the time that I worked in the industry. Um, this is, you know, now an agent can have a license in Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and they can sell in all these states over the phone. It's really hard to generate um, referrals when you don't really know the people um, that you're selling to. If you go back to when I was selling, I worked in three counties in rural Arkansas, right? These are counties that had 5,000 or 15,000 people. Um, I was in those towns a couple of days every single week. And so when you wrote, uh, you know, the mayor of the town or the CPA or the head person that was the AARP chapter, um, those people make the connections and do the work for you. So I think that's one thing that um, maybe is different nowadays is like if you're getting in and, you know, developing relationships with the area on aging. So like you reach out and you tell them what you do, because here's the deal. Those those people that run the the uh, the ship office in your state that, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's like a. um it's not really a part of the insurance department, but they they are basically there as a consumer protection group that will answer questions. And so they're looking for people to refer uh, consumers to. Uh, the area on aging agencies are looking for places to refer consumers. So when you develop those relationships and you sit down and you explain like, hey, Cody, if you refer people to me, it's a safe place. I'm going to take care of them. Then listen, I don't mean this bad, but like, that's great for them because they don't have to do any work. You, the consumer can call in and say, Hey, Cody, who does Medicare insurance? And they can say, call Jeremy Pielemeyer. They can wash their hands and they know I'm going to take care of it. So, um, I think with regard to that question, um, I, I think that I didn't do that because I cultivated relationships in small towns, but, Definitely today, uh, places I would want to get out and and meet people that are decision makers that can pass my name around. And then I think that um, Tina asked a question of, did I hand out business cards? I definitely think that that's exactly what I would be doing if I were building those relationships is just, hey, have someone call me, have someone call me. Yeah. Uh, do you think it is better to do a handwritten card or a system like they use called send out cards? So I don't know what send out cards is. It could be a great system, but I I try to. Um, you've heard me say this, Cody. I'm not the like super smart. I'm I'm from the country, so I have to like dumb everything down for me to understand it. Uh, so I think about what like, Brett. I think like I would ask you the question of like, what kind of mail do you open? Like if I get something in the mail and we get them and they look like they're handwritten, but they're printed and they say like Jeremy Pelemeyer, they're in real pretty cursive writing. I'm not going to open that because I know it's junk mail. I happen to write like a seven-year-old. And so when you get a letter from me, you're going to think, oh, my grandson sent me this. But no, it's not. I'm actually a grown man and I just write like your grandson. But you're going to open that. And uh, that's what I need is for you to get that and be like, oh, this guy sent me a thank you card. Um, so I think always handwritten for me. We used to do th uh, Christmas cards. And we'd send out a thousand Christmas cards and my wife and I would sit down and we would buy these cards and we would handwrite every single address, even though my office would print labels that I could stick on there. It was always handwritten. Mm. Wow. I love that. Uh, what do we offer other agents, CPAs, mortgage folks, et cetera, in return for referrals as an incentive, gift cards, hundred bucks, free car, just kidding. Or how do you keep them from forgetting about you? You know, I never gave out any money um, or like lunches or, you know, pins or gimmicky things like that. I think for me that that the, the last question he asked is, how do you keep them from forgetting about you? Like, here's my goal. When I call you and I say hello, I want you to say, hey, Jeremy, it's been a while or hey, it's great to talk to you. Like, I want you to know my voice as as your client, just like you would if your best friend called. And, it, and if I can accomplish that, then no one's forgetting about me. Awesome. Country folk tend to be amazingly hard workers. No doubt about that. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, personalized handwritten. What about sending out a monthly newsletter? I used to do that for years, actually. Um, 
it worked really well. Uh, I still get clients that, cause I stopped sending it years ago, but I sent one every month for like for several years. Mm-hmm. And I had people that were finally like, dude, where I love that newsletter with the recipes and all that. They get used to it. Yeah. Um, and it was like, it was like an update. I would throw a crossword puzzle on or a recipe or like, you know, make it fun or like, Hey, here's a new product we're working on. You know, like, did you ever do it? Did you ever do those? I didn't, but I love the idea. I think I didn't do it because I was kind of a, I did things myself and was, I wasn't yeah. a one man show. I had amazing people around me, but you know, I would have been the one to have to put that together. And that, that was the problem. It became yeah. too much of a hassle and it was also a decent expense. Now I got referrals every month because of it. So I'm not saying it was, it was worth the expense. It was the, it was the time aspect. I should have got to where, okay, I'm making six figures. Let's just hire an assistant to do all that, you know? And I did a little bit, but yeah, it became a hassle for sure. But I loved it. It works, Brett. It works. Um, uh, well, Jeremy, if, if they have questions, buddy, or they want to get in touch, learn more about you and elder care, uh, where should they go and what should they do? Yeah. So uh, my email is Jeremy, J E R E M I E, at E I S group.net. So I don't know. Do you, you put that in a link or do I need to re- repeat that? There you go. Jeremy awesome. at EIS group.net. Yeah. Yep. They can uh, email me. Uh, they can they can call me. Eight hundred nine 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 seven three four zero. Seven three four zero. Yep. And uh, listen, I say this all the time, but um, I, I think it's all about us as insurance agents trying to to be great agents and help that consumer when they really need something. Like I'm, I know, Cody. You, you guys have done a ton of life insurance. So you know what it's like to get that call from a consumer that's like, Hey, my dad passed away. How much insurance did he have? And you say 10,000 and they start crying because it, it changed their life. Yeah. Um, I think that's what, what it should be about for us. Um, and so I, I say that to say like you guys on this um, call can call anytime. Like if, if, if we're working together, great. If we're not, I still want to help. Um, because I think that's how we all get better. Um, and so any questions that anyone has, you know, I just, I appreciate you having me on here. I think, like I've told you, there's probably 50 other people that were better choices to talk to than me. Um, so thanks. Dude, you're awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for spending some time. Um, actually one last answer. What about using and building an email list and sending out regular emails? I never did it with clients. I love it now. Yeah. No, I think like the idea that you talked about when you're talking about a newsletter and recipes and all these things, like, I think through an email uh, campaign, that would be awesome. Just yeah. having something that goes out that has a family picture and, you know, uh, a recipe and all these things that consumers can read. I think that would be great. Yeah, that'd be so much easier. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, dude, Jeremy, thank you for your time. Appreciate you being a part of this. And thank yeah. you for joining and teaching on tonight's webinar. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks to everybody for jumping on. I appreciate it. If anybody needs anything, let me know. Happy late birthday, Cody. Boom. Thank you, brother. Thank you all for joining tonight. Have an amazing night and awesome week. Hope to see you at 8% Nation 2023 next week and see you on the next webinar. Adios. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one. You're going to love it. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Yeah, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.